The airline operators of Nigeria, AON, has suspended its decision to withdraw its services across all airports in the country. Barely a day before the association planned to effect the withdrawal, it explained that it was suspending the decision in the interest of the national economy and security considerations. AON President Abdul Munaf Serena announced the suspension in a statement jointly signed by six members of the association. Earlier, the Ministry of Aviation had assured Nigerians that members of AON were reviewing their decision to withdraw services on Monday, May 9th. It confirmed that Ibom Air, Green Africa Airlines, Iric Air, Dana Air and others said they would carry on with their normal flight schedules. We are now being joined by Dr. Abdul Munaf Is Yunusa, President, Airline Operators of Nigeria and Chairman Asman Air. Glad to have you. Mr. Yunusa. Okay, we also have Mr. Wale Shadare, an aviation expert on the news tonight. Mr. Shadare, are you with us? Mr. Shadare, can you hear me? Good evening, Mr. Shodere. Okay, it looks like we're having a bit of... Mr. Shodere, good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can. Welcome to the news. I, I can hear you loud and clear. Very good. Good evening, good evening to you. Dr. Yunisa, are you with us? Yeah, I, I'm with you. All right, very good. Glad to have you, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay, so let, let's go straight into it. Have the issues which led to the planned flight suspensions been sorted out? Hello. I start with you, Dr. Yunusa. The issues yeah. which led to the planned flight suspension, have they been addressed? Yeah. Okay, can you hear me then, Mr. Shudere? Looks like... Uh, Dr. Yunisa is not... Is to our effort. Are you with me? Okay, go ahead. Hello? Go ahead. Okay. So we, due to the federal government intervening on the issue of the uh, suspension of uh, strike, so because of in the interest of the masses and the interest of the federal government, which they call us and say that... Uh, he wants us to have a table meeting with them tomorrow and next tomorrow. So we decided to uh, step down for the for our action. So that is why we decided to to say that every our members should go back for his normal operator, pending our meeting with the federal government tomorrow and next tomorrow. Okay, so it's just a few days before we know exactly. Yeah, they, they, what they, the situation? they told us to give them 48 hours, so we agreed to give them 48 hours. Okay. Well, the astronomical rise in the price of aviation fuel, that's jet fuel A1, from 190 naira to 70, 700 naira per liter, is disturbing yeah. and disheartening. The issue has been persistent, especially as well as unavailability. How can a, a complete resolution be achieved? You know, I'm still you with too. you. Dr. Yunis, I'm still with you. Okay. You see, the aviation fuel, like you, how you said that we used to buy it 190, now ready to 700, 700 naira, which is very, very difficult to continue operating on that one. Because if you see that, if we can continue buying aviation fuel at 700 or we have to raise our ticket fare to 120, which is too, too high, considering the masses. Even the 50,000, 60, 70 we are selling, some of the people cannot afford to make that money. So that is why we say that we have to bring the attention of the federal government so that it come to this, uh, our business, to see how we are going to uh, continue on this business. If not, everybody, will stop and keep this. Uh, he cannot do it. Considering that the, the dollar, we are buying the dollar, well, it was 300, 360. Now the dollar is getting to 600 naira. The, you see the aviation business, even the carpet of the, uh, of the aircraft, 
We are not doing it in Nigeria. We buy it abroad. Everything we buy it by dollar. Ninety percent of the of the purchase for the aircraft is by dollar. So all this one caused this problem: the aviation and the dollar. No, Dr. Uh, Wale Shadara, you are an aviation expert. Can you come okay. in and tell us how you are analyzing all of this? How are you taking all of this in and what's your assessment of what's going on? Uh, uh, thank you very much. Um, we know that if we get to this level, that the airlines will, will decide to take the action that they plan to take. Uh, if we remember closely, um, some few months ago, um, aviation fuel rose from almost two, 250 naira per liter to uh, 500 and 600 naira per liter. And the airline operators had a meeting and decided to adjust fare uh, to 50,000 naira uh, uh, for one way. And, um, uh, that was the base fare, that was the least fare, and um, there were a lot of um, outcry against the airline operators. But if you look at it um, holistically, you'll find out that the airlines are going through some of the difficult times. Uh, aviation fuel takes about 40-45% of the revenue of airlines. Even at 50%, it becomes very, very difficult for them to remain afloat. What are they going to do? The best thing for them to do, which they had, which they did, was to raise their fare to 50,000 naira. But if you look at the situation very well, you find out that how many people, like uh, the AOM president said, how many people can really afford 50,000 uh, airfare in this economy? I don't. I do not know how the airlines are going to survive because if they try to adjust this fare more, they have competitors in Jibo, they have competitors in Mazamaza, they have competitors in uh, Oyugo, and these competitors are the road transport uh, uh, transporters. Uh, a lot of people will take to uh, uh, road transportation, if, even with the attendant security on our roads. Um, I do not know how we're going to do it. Aviation fuel has been deregulated a long time ago. Uh, the oil marketers will tell you that uh, they, are selling, uh, they are selling to the airlines at the rate at which they bought. Well, analysts so, have said that yeah. an efficient yeah. review of the fuel subsidy system will bring down the prices. Do you agree? Uh, uh, if we had a refinery, it would have probably perhaps brought down the price of uh, aviation fuel. Uh, but we do not have that. So the pressure is so much on the um, airline operators. Um, if you look at it, the Russian-Ukraine war has also contributed uh, largely to this. But honestly, I don't know where we go from here. Uh, the operators are really, really crying. It's very, very difficult for them to operate. And if nothing is done, we pray the airlines will not start cutting corners. If they start cutting corners, we all know what is going to happen. It's a disaster waiting to happen. Well, if let, you look at it, the dollars, the, um, the airlines are finding it very, very difficult to even source dollars they cannot even get dollars to do their operation. And airline operation or airline business anywhere in the world is dollarized. So where do we go from here? Where do we go from uh, here? Let me return to Dr. Unisa. Dr. Unisa. Yeah. Yeah, well, the pipeline bridging the supply of fuel from Ejibo to the MMA has not been repaired by the NNPC since 1992. That's 30 years after it got ruptured. Uh, what is the government saying in this regard, or is it part of what you're going to discuss with them within these 48 hours? No, that one is not a part we are going to discuss with them. Uh, because that, you uh, see, what we want out is immediate, the immediate supply of the aviation fuel. You see, the aviation business. It's not like uh, other business. I am in oil company. So I know that this aviation fuel, NPC is the major 
importers of this aviation foil. NNPC is the one who is importing this aviation foil. The majority of this aviation foil is NNPC imported it, and it is distributed it to the market. Dr. Yunisa. The people they request from such allocation, every week, this is our allocation. We sit down together with them. We spend about seven days with our members, with our marketers, with the NNPC people, that this is our daily demand, this is our weekly demand, this is our monthly demand. They agree that they are going to give us, but that one didn't talk. The issue of this pipe, we are saying that that one, we, we cannot say that we are talking of that one. We need the immediate, the immediate supply. Immediate supply see, at what cost? The, 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 the man who is the, the expert uh, aviation man, mm. uh, who is saying, he is saying the truth because the aviation business is not like other business. It's not like other business. We cannot, uh, like what he said, that if they didn't do anything, we can make a corner. No, 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 no. We cannot make a corner. What we want is to see that we bring the attention of the concern authority to see how we are going to resolve this issue. Instead of make a corner, we can just pack our aircraft. We, we cannot do it. Hmm. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, uh, that's perhaps a good place to leave it until we hear you're, you're through with your meeting uh, with the government uh, within the time frame of 48 hours. And then air travelers will be able to tell if they can still fly or not. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Abdul Munaf. It's UNISA. You're the president airline operators of Nigeria and chairman Azman Air. Thank you for your time. And uh, Mr. Wale Shadare an aviation expert. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time tonight. Mr. Wali. Good evening, Alaji. Doctor. Thank you very much. Uh, I pray that um, this problem will be resolved as quickly as possible. By so God's grace. By, well, that is what we pray. We yes. don't want this. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.